Hi everybody, Brian here from Attendance Bias, giving you a preview of next week's episode, which will focus on May 27th, 1994 at the Warfield Theater in San Francisco with special guest Adam Jerugum. So today's episode or today's preview is just exactly that, a little bit of a heads up of what to expect and then most importantly, stories, memories, thoughts, and ideas from you, the listeners, about that spring 1994 tour. You'll hear a lot more about it from Adam and I in next week's episode. But what I'm excited to share with you today is the idea of Fish's growth in 1994. That becomes a major theme in our conversation. Now, to me, over the course of the whole year, obviously, Fish started the 1994 year and the spring with shows at the Flynn Theater in Vermont, as well as the Beacon Theater in New York City. And then, as we all know, famously, they finished the year with New Year's Eve in Boston Garden, but also played their first show at Madison Square Garden on the 30th of December 1994. And as the next few clips will share, a lot of fans and a lot of listeners leave specific memories about the spring 1994 tour that, as I heard them, act as breadcrumbs of a sort to show their growth, to show how 1994 was the last time that you could hear fish developing before they just completely explode in 1995, both as a touring mechanism, but also in their sound. So without any further ado, let's listen to the memories, thoughts, and experiences of attendance bias listeners about the spring of 1994. Hey, Brian, Chris from Philly, calling in with some spring 94 memories. The first show was April 8, 1994, at Recreation Hall, Penn State University. Uh, it's basically just like a big high school gym with bleachers and the like. Uh, still have my ticket stub. Tickets, 1750 which is probably less than what a nice tasty IPA cost at shows today. Um, I was really new to the band. I didn't know a lot of the music, but my buddy who got me into them went to Bucknell. He invited me to come to the show with him. Um, we were almost at Penn State coming from Bucknell campus when we got pulled over. Um, as the officer was approaching the car, my buddy dressed the individual as Sir. Turns out it was a woman. So obviously he got a nice at speeding ticket. But that wasn't the worst of it. He turned to me and said, I just realized that I left the tickets to the show in my dorm room. So back to Bucknell we went, grabbed the tickets, got to the show. Uh, probably about two songs into the first set, I'd say. We did get to see Mimi Fishman come out, who I didn't know, which was kind of mind-blowing for me, considering I had no idea who she was. Um, don't really remember a lot of the music, honestly. Uh, just remember being completely blown away by the whole thing. Did a lot of people watching. Remember how fast the band played. It was incredible. A nice contact. Uh, Big Back Flurry. Encore, which was memorable. Uh, the funny thing that I remember saying coming out of the show was that, you know, that Susie Greenberg doesn't really seem like much of a fish song, song to me. So uh, live and learn, my friend. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Uh, spring 94. Yeah, beautiful run with friends to uh, the Stabler Arena show. Then the uh, two wonderful shows at the Man in Philly, and then uh, the Patriot Center in Northern Virginia, where the most memorable part was the girls' soccer team that the boys had met at a uh, gas station fill up on the road to the show, and they had invited the girls to come see it. And uh, during Mike's song in the week of Paul, the girls bridge the songs with a chant of uh, who we are. Do, 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 do. I don't know. You know, girls soccer team chant uh, in the middle of the mic song. So fantastic. Uh, wonderful shows. Such strong playing. What a great time. Thanks for reminding me. Hey, so I wanted to leave a story about the 523-94 show. Um, 
my buddy and I bought tickets that night and had front row balcony and decided to puff a bull right when it started. And then all of a sudden we look around and we see all these security people just coming right at us. So we put it out and look it over the balcony and then we get grabbed, taken into an elevator. The guy keeps asking, what was it? What was it? I kept saying it was a drum cigarette. He said, what was it? And finally the elevator doors are about to open and kick us out. And I say, all right, it was, it was weed. He goes, okay, you can go back up. We go back to our seats. And there's a handicapped folks in our seats, and we ask the usher, okay, these were our seats. What do we do now? And they're like, oh, do you want their seats? And we're like, okay, sure. So now a different dude takes us back to the same elevator, takes us down, takes us out, walks us down to the third row center, and it's all during shock dust. But it's super sweet, great way to – well, not a great way to start a show, but glad glad we made it through the show. And uh, and then 11 years later, I – I had my first born son in Portland on that day. So, you know, 52394 to 523 2005. Those dates really resonate with important for me. Cheers. Uh, hey, my name's Andy. I cut the Spring 94 fish show with a really good buddy, Greg. We cruised from Colorado and hit Eugene. Uh, which opened with the Haley's, which is awesome. Then went up to, what, Olympia, which is like a small place. Ran into a high school buddy that I hadn't seen in a while. That was cool. And then the small little uh, rain wreck auditorium was small. We ripped paper for, uh, for what was it, uh, fee. And then uh, Seattle was right at the Moore Theater with the bike song. And then we get Portland. Um, as our last night of the show, and it was uh, an awesome shock dust opener, and um, we cruised back to Colorado after that, and that was the beginning of everything for me and Fish and my buddy Greg, who we now both live out in the Pacific Northwest, and we don't get at shows no more. Hey, it's Brad. Um, how you doing? So. I have a story about the, the Spring 94 tour. Uh, I caught it at the Fox Theater in Atlanta. This was Fish's first um, big venue that they played in Atlanta, definitely over, um, you know, over, it was like over like two or 3,000 seats, um, maybe five, I'm not sure. Anyway, but it was, it happened the same time that this thing known as Freaknik was going on in Atlanta, which is one of the biggest African-American college age kind of party gatherings in the mid nineties. And it just tied up so much traffic and getting there was impossible. And somehow my concert buddy and I found a parking space nearby because these cars would just cruise and they wouldn't park. So this poor man was like, no one's parking, no one's paying. And we found a, a quick parking space. We got in the theater and to my amazement, the crowd was full. I guess, I guess all the, Fish guys got the menu to, I mean, got the net memo to get there. And the show was incredible because Colonel Bruce came out and so did, uh, the late, well, late Girl Rose and, and, uh, Merle Saunders. So you had two guests, um, in one night. Colonel, Colonel Bruce didn't sing, but they all, all, at one point, all five of them, all five fish, four fish members and Colonel Bruce all were playing on one Janny piano. And I think they were doing a, uh, a cover of, uh, Larry Cohen's Who by Fire. And Merle Saunders did um, High Heel Sneakers. That was a lot of, or Red Dress, whatever the song was called. And that was that closed out the first set. And I think Trey had broken his leg that tour, and they pulled a guest from the uh, the crowd to do uh, an audience member in the crowd to do You Enjoy Myself. Anyway, these are all just random thoughts in my head, but um, I can go into more detail about the drive getting there and what it was like having that whole show. But it was a lot of fun. Talk to you later, and um, see you soon. Bye. Hey guys, my name is Phil McGonigal and I'm from Long Island, New York, originally from Pennsylvania. My second fish show was spring 1994. Uh, my college girlfriend at the time got us tickets going to college in Philly, so it was a short drive down to University of Delaware. I'd been to 71893 in Pittsburgh for my first show 
but didn't quite get it yet, I'd say, although I remember a lot from that first show, and it was amazing. It took nine months and sitting in the stands of 4 at the Bob Carpenter Center at University of Delaware for me to really seek out more shows to listen to and attend. I went on to see 15 shows in 95, so this 94 show was really influential for me. I remember a lot about it, the 4 94 show. I really enjoyed the first set, Split Open and Melt, um, but the entire second set is unforgettable. From the 2001 opener, a big fan of the film, uh, to the wild big ball jam, I will never forget that. I've never seen anything like that. Um, also, the man who stepped into yesterday, Alvinu Malkenu segment, not to mention the gin. It is a solid and, I believe, underrated set from this tour. Fish even sang a song from the Jungle Book, which I loved as a kid, so that was fun. Um, and, yeah, 41894 was definitely a fun show. Perfect for a noob like me back then to experience the band in their full glory. So I just wanted to send some notes to you guys. I hope that helps. Can't wait to hear what you guys are putting together for the Spring 94 tour. Thanks so much. Hey, it's Brad. Fall 94 caught one show at Atlanta Civic Center. I believe it was my wife at the time's birthday and first fish show. Hers, not mine. Uh, it was just electric. It was the, uh, um, they opened up with C and went right into Llama and it was just the place just exploded. And I think at one point, I think the second set, Trey like played uh, the entry to Voodoo Child, like before, before, like with the Lala and everything before diving to the second set. But it was a fantastic show. Um, I believe they did the acoustic, um, Boston's long time, but they were, when they, with the, they were on, you know, bass, mandolin, uh, bass and then washboard, guitar and, uh, and, um, oh gosh, whatever Paige was playing, Paige, Paige and banjo. And, uh, anyway, so it was a fun show, um, Fall 94. It was really fun. If you want to give me a call about it, we can talk more. Hey, Brian, it's Jeff. Sorry about the late call and the late um, story. Anyway, uh, 4-16-94 was Simone Center, UMass Amherst. Um, a friend and I bounced up there for a college visit, quote-unquote. Uh, I was at boarding school near Hartford, and um, we went up there, and I remember that Trey had just broken his foot or sprained his ankle or something like that because he was in a cast and he sat in a chair the whole time, like in his spot on the stage. And the set list was awesome. They played Stash and Yem and they did a Vibration of Life. And I do remember during the You Enjoy Myself um, for the trampoline part, since Trey couldn't jump on the trampoline, they had to... Uh, Mike was just the only one that did it, and Trey just kind of bounced his head <laughs> in tandem with Mike. Um, so, yeah, amazing show. 94 was my favorite year by far. I saw the most shows of that year of a year of being a fan. So, anyway, uh, I will talk to you soon, man. Hope all's well. Bye. Thank you to everybody who called and left messages about specific shows from the Spring 94 tour, your memories, your experiences. It's like little episodes in two-minute bites. So I just have to send a billion thank yous to everyone who called and left a message. I appreciate it so much. And even if you didn't call in and leave a message, I hope that this mini-episode preview gets you excited for next week's episode, which is a full-length episode with Adam Jerugam as we discuss May 27th, 1994 at the Warfield. So until then, thank you so much for listening to Attendance Bias, and I'll see you next week.